Hey, thanks for stopping by Computer Creations. Today we're going to talk a little bit about CNC machines, diode lasers, and CO2 lasers. I've owned all three, and what I thought I'd do is I would share my observations and some of the mistakes that I've made and some assumptions that I made when I was purchasing these machines. Uh, so as you kind of go through deciding on what you'd like to get, uh, you can learn from the things that I've uh, experienced. Stick around. The CNC machine was the first thing that I purchased. I purchased it about five years ago. This came as a kit. One of the things that I would recommend if you're looking at uh, CNC machines, whether you should buy one assembled, buy one as a kit, if you're handy at all, I would highly recommend that you build it. And the reason why I say that is at some point in time, uh, you're going to have to replace some bearings or do some fixes on your machine. Um, and if you've put it together, you know how to mechanically take it apart and fix it. So um, that would be my first thing. If you're, if you're so inclined, order one as a kit. Um, you'll thank yourself one, two years down the road, you need to replace a bearing or something like that. You know how it goes together. Um, one of the other things that I will tell you is, if you're looking at a CNC machine and you're looking at the prices, uh, you want to consider kind of what you're going to do with this machine. And what I mean by that, is it strictly going to be a hobby, kind of tinker, don't have to worry about it? Or are you thinking about, you know, I might start this as a hobby, but grow it into a business? I can tell you if that's kind of the direction that you're going, you want to try to purchase as big a bed space as you possibly can afford. And the reason why I say that is what will happen is you'll outgrow your bed fairly quickly. You'll start with little bitty projects and you'll get your confidence going on this on a machine like this and you'll want to get bigger and better and, and the, the bottom line is all of a sudden you've outgrown your machine and then it gets frustrating because you can't do what you want to do. So this particular one is a PDJ CNC, sent it to me as a kit, uh, put it all together, it took me about a couple weeks to put it together. Um, but the beauty of that is, is I, I know exactly how all this goes together and the sequence that it goes together. So if I've got to fix something, it's really not that big a deal. I know how it comes apart and goes back together. So that would be one thing I would, I would recommend. Purchase as high-end uh, uh, components as you can get. Go with the high-wind linear rails. Go with the uh, servo motors if you can afford them. Um, uh, uh, higher uh, uh, rated NEMA motor. Um, the bottom line is you kind of get what you pay for when it comes to CNC machines. And so if you're planning on doing a lot of work with a lot of thicker materials, you're planning on doing some 2.5D work, um, then uh, spend the money because it will come back to you in spades when you go ahead and you start creating these things. Something else to consider is when you get a CNC machine, one of the things that it creates a lot of is dust and wood chips. And you have to have the ability to, to get rid of them. Um, wherever you're going to put your CNC machine, it's gonna, it, it, it could make a huge mess. And so whether it's in a garage or in a shop, um, if you don't want that shop to be completely full of dust and debris, um, when you're figuring into your uh, grand scheme of things, be sure you figure out that you're going to have to have some kind of dust collection. Um, they've got some fairly inexpensive ways to do that. Um, it doesn't cost a lot of money, but that's something you're definitely going to have to consider, and that takes up additional space. Uh, so you've got your CNC machine, but then I've got a, 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 a shop vac system that's probably four by four, four foot by four foot square in one corner, that that's all it does is does uh, dust collection. So dust collection is absolutely critical. The other thing that you'll consider when you're doing something is you gotta remember that a lot of times, I, I'm here in Nevada and we have very low humidity, so I've gotta worry about static all the time. And so you've gotta treat, uh, you've gotta bond everything, ground everything, because this can tre uh, create a, a a tremendous level of static um, and it can bite you so you got to make sure that you have everything kind of grounded otherwise um, it can create a problem not only for you but for your electronics um, other things to consider is make sure you if you're gonna buy a CNC machine 
make sure that you can put in a, a larger router. Uh, whether it's a spindle or a just a standalone router. The reason why I put in just a Bosch router, a three horse Bosch router, is because if for some reason that router fails, I can go down to a uh, big box store, buy another one and pop it in and I can be back up and running in a half a day. So um, compared to like a regular spindle, a variable speed spindle, they're very nice, they're a lot quieter. But you're going to, you know, you're, you don't have the availability. So I wanted to uh, have the ava a little bit more of availability and they're quite a bit cheaper. So uh, the other thing that you're going to have to consider is the software that you're going to use on your CNC machine. I used Mach 3 or use Mach 3 as my control uh, software along with Vetric VCarb Pro. And those two softwares together are a great combination. Vetric VCar Pro or Desktop or Aspire, um, those are just different levels of, of software, uh, really provide you a lot of creativity. You can do a lot of things with that software. It's fairly easy to learn. The other beauty of that is, is I use my uh, Vetric uh, VCar Pro uh, as design software for some of the things that I do for my laser, some things that Lightburn isn't able to do yet. So um, it's kind of a dual use in that respect. So some of the other things that you want to make sure your CNC machine has is limit switches. <clears throat> These switches protect your machine. I would highly recommend that you have limit switches on both ends of your X and both ends of your Y. Uh, when you're learning how to use this machine, if you don't have these safety switches in place, you can crash your machine and do a lot of damage. Um, and then uh, if you haven't put it together, you won't know how to fix it. So you've got uh, X, that's an X limit switch right there. You got one on the other side that you can't see. And then you have them on the Y as well. So limit switches are definitely uh, something that you would want to invest. Standard, they come with two. Uh, I would highly recommend that you upgrade and put two more. That way you really have no chance of crashing, crashing your machine. And trust me, uh, when I was learning how to use this, um, there were times that if I wouldn't have had those limit switches, I would have uh, damaged my machine. It's uh, something that you really want to consider. The other thing that you're going to want to consider is these, um, the NEMA motors, uh, the higher rated NEMA motors, they're always on. Even if you're not using the machine, they're powered up and they create a lot of heat. And so one of the things you might want to consider is you're going to have to have the ability to put muffin fans or some kind of additional cooling, depending on where you're putting your CNC machine. If you're putting it in a garage and the garage isn't conditioned, these are going to get uh, awfully hot. And so you can see that what I've done is I've just put some muffin fans on the on, uh, the uh, NEMA 23 motors uh, to keep them cool. Originally when I purchased this CNC machine I wanted to also get a laser attach attachment for it. The problem was back five years ago laser technology was just way too expensive I couldn't afford it. So about a year ago I decided hey I wanted to put a laser on my CNC machine. These are the things that I discovered. Um, as I was researching lasers I uh, was looking into a diode laser, uh, eventually bought a, a 10 watt diode laser and originally I wanted to just go ahead and make an attachment and put it on my CNC machine. The couple things that I learned very quickly uh, that were frustrating for me was, first of all, um, it was very, a matter of fact, I, I didn't get it to work. I thought I could use my uh, diode la laser setup on, uh, in Mach 3 control software and no matter what I did, I just couldn't get it to work. I know some people have gotten it to work, but I just could not get it done. The other thing that um, I made a mistake on, uh, and this is something to really pay attention, uh, if you're used to a CNC machine, you're used to speeds in inches per minute. This is real important because this is a gotcha for me. Um, I can run about 100 inches per minute with this machine. So I thought to myself, hey, if I buy a diode lo a laser setup, even if it was a standalone diode laser setup, and I could get 100 inches per minute out of it, I could roughly see the same speeds and I could create what I needed to 
based on what I knew about C CNC speeds. Huh. The thing that you got to remember is CNC speak is in inches per minute. Laser speak is in inches per second. Well, what I discovered when I bought my 10 watt diode laser, put it on a uh, open builds uh, 1010 aggro setup, a beautiful setup worked great, but it was just way too slow. It did great work, but it took me an hour to do most things. Um, so my problem was, as I was, I was relating it to how fast the CNC works, you got to remember that your CNC has things that, like this is a quarter inch bit. Uh, and so you're hogging out material a quarter, bit, a quarter inch at a time. Where in a laser, you've got a laser beam that's about the size of three or four human hairs. And so it takes a lot, lot you've got to have a lot more speed from a laser perspective to do the same amount of work as you do your CNC. So what I would say is if you're thinking about putting a diode laser on your CNC machine, just understand that it's going to be painfully slow. It will engrave beautifully. Um, I made some absolute beautiful engravings. It's just very time consuming. And from a cutting ability, you're not going to be able to cut much. And if you do try to cut, let's say, 8th inch material, it's going to be very, very slow. So just keep that in mind. If I would have known that uh, before I purchased my diode, uh, because time is money to me, I do, I do this as a business. And so it couldn't take me an hour to create something. I, I, I needed something a lot faster than that. So just don't, if you own a CNC and you're thinking about a laser, uh, just remember that CNC speak is inches per minute and laser speak is inches per second. So let's do a quick review before we move on to the CO2 laser. If you're looking at a CNC machine, buy as big a space as you possibly can. Make sure you go with high-end quality materials. Make sure you get all of your limit switches. Don't settle for two. Get all four. Get good quality uh, control software like Mach 3, VCAR Pro, those kind of things. It will make your life a lot easier. If you can buy it as a kit, definitely do that because down the road when you've got to uh, replace or maintain this machine, you'll know how to do it. Um, and so the other things that I will tell you the difference between a CNC machine and a laser, the, probably the biggest difference is setup time. One of the things that you will find when you have a CNC machine is it takes me longer to set uh, and, and affix the material to the bed as it does to do the work. So I might spend 10 or 15, 20 minutes uh, getting the material ready to carve uh, and then do the work. So there's a lot of setup time when it comes to CNC work. Compare that to a laser, especially a CO2 laser. Uh, you basically put the material down in the bed space. Uh, very rarely do you have to hold it down. If it's warped, yes, you've got to clamp it down. But your setup time when it comes to a laser is a tenth as what it is on a CNC machine. Like I said, CNC machine because you've got a lot of physical forces going on. You've got to make sure that that uh, piece of wood that you're going to carve is held down and that it doesn't move. Because if it moves, you ruin your piece where there's no physical interaction with a laser. So setup time when you're putting your material in, getting ready to cut it or getting ready to... Uh, engrave it, there's virtually no setup time on a CO2 laser compared to a CNC machine. That's one big thing I uh, catch myself doing. If it's uh, carving work or um, stuff like that, I will much rather do it in the, uh, on the laser compared to the CNC machine just because of the setup time. I've had a lot of people ask me since I own both, do I prefer one versus the other? And I will tell you, if I hadn't purchased either one of these and I needed to purchase one machine, I would probably purchase the laser instead of the CNC machine. Uh, not that I don't love my CNC machine, I absolutely do. It's just that there's a lot more variety of things you can do with a laser compared to a CNC machine. Um, CNC machines have very specific uses. And, uh, you know, I've created signs up to two inches thick on this particular machine. You, could do, you, you couldn't ever do anything like that 
uh, with a laser. So they have their very specific uses. If you're planning on doing a lot of big heavy woodwork, you're not getting into too intricate type of stuff, you're making a lot of signs, maybe some two and a half uh, D related stuff. Your CNC is about the uh, way to go. If you're looking at, uh, you know, you want to have a huge variety of things to do, tumblers, mugs, engraving on a number of different materials, uh, and have the ability to cut up to, like I said, a half inch. If you go with a bigger machine and a higher wattage, you can go even thicker than that. So depending on what you're willing to, to spend, they're roughly about the same price. Um, so you're kind of splitting hairs there. Uh, anyway, I truly enjoy them both, and uh, I hope this little bit of information was helpful to you. If you uh, enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Until next time, have a great day.